There is this huge police chase right over here. Just happened, I think this was last night, and absolutely insane. When I was watching this and the intensity of it, I was thinking the police love this. This this is their this is their sport. Their sport is is getting on the air, getting a helicopter in the air, having thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people engaged and watching in a situation that they control. Because make no mistake, when there's these chases, they control the situation. Let's actually look, and I'll come back and we'll talk about it. Um, so somebody steals a car. Somebody steals this van to begin with, all right? It, it, it's somewhere in this, he switches. But he starts by stealing this van. You can tell it's a sport because the announcers... Uh, actually sounds like you're watching a football danger, game. But he is waiting okay. for backup, and at this point really has very few options available to him. Here's another officer on the suspect's so, right yeah. rear flank. They've got so him cornered. He's bailing out. He's going sure out. These vans are big, guys. I have a van like this, a window van. Those two officers now, I notice... And he is just going back and forth. There's only one cop car here, right? To escape here. And cops are the and ultimate cowards. Cops don't actually stand up for things. Turn. So they're and not going to engage with this guy, even though now would have been the time to really make him not leave and just pull in there, right? So he couldn't get out. Would have been a done deal right there. officers do? They really don't have many options. They actually did. They did have options. All they had to do instead of hiding back here is is keep pushing their car in and really just kind of push him until he was cornered and couldn't go out anymore. So they had options because they weren't in Here a small vehicle either. Here cool car, officers out of the vehicle, and now he's racing. Listen, this, this sounds like you're watching the game. Fitzcam knows this. He works in, in media. So I'm going to skip through. We're not going to watch like the whole hour video here. But they got this chase. You got your announcer. You got your helicopter. You got your aerial cams. All right. Back onto the 91 freeway. There, he is that reckless and willing to put themselves in that position where they are face to face with those officers. Very dangerous. Right. So what do we have? We have a stolen vehicle. We have a stolen vehicle. And I'm going to mute this side of it, the audio for now. And you have now these police engaging in a pursuit. Now, with with perhaps the rare exception. Okay. With perhaps the rare exception of a person, like a, a kidnapped person where they're trying to, to recover them, which is usually not really what's happening. Let's be, let's come back to this because it does sound like a baseball game. And that's how, when I, when I heard this, I was like, uh, this is a sport. This is a sporting event for the serfs, okay? Because this entire situation was completely unnecessary. If you go back to that first six minute mark in the video, you see that everything that occurred was because of the initial Keystone cops that just sat there while the guy in the stolen vehicle rammed their vehicle and, and left. Because as they hid behind their cars and trees with guns, right, you got some guy who's probably on drugs or something like that, who steals a car, but these guys who are supposed to be professional crime stoppers, right, any group of neighborhood watch people could have rolled in there, opened the door, and drugged this guy out before he had a chance to move the vehicle. Without violence, nobody getting hurt, a little bit of damage to the vehicles. That would have been it, right? That's what us normal people would do if someone was like cornered in our neighborhood and had stolen a vehicle. I, I think that's what I would do. Isn't that what you would do? If you were in this neighborhood, your neighbor's car, let's say, had been stolen, uh, another neighbor had pushed him in with his pickup truck in the corner, what would you do as other neighbors, right? Well, you, you'd come in here, and you would just pull it out right here at the at the six minute mark, the five minute mark when they had him. He was he was literally right here. But that would have wouldn't have made an exciting event, and it also would have required that the police officers, instead of being these these conniving rats hiding behind people's cars and trees and houses and protecting themselves. Uh, with other people, they would have had to actually work and, and actually do something that was relevant to their job, right? And you're right. If it's a, a show is for ratings. If it bleeds, it loads. And that's what these car chases are all about. That's why immediately they get the helicopters out. Yeah, they could have used pepper spray, but you wouldn't even need it, probably. If you'd had a couple guys there, they could have just ran up to the car and stopped the guy, right? Because they had, they had him cornered. They had him blocked in. So this goes on for an hour, and at some point in here, he's changing, he changes vehicles. Now, here's what I want you to think about. The police, the first thing to understand, 
the biggest car thieves in the world, in pretty much any country, are the police. The police are in the business. It's one of their primary revenue sources is stealing cars. It's even true in, here in Mexico, right? The police find ways to infract cars. They're, they're in cahoots with the tow companies that give them a kickback to come and steal those cars, lock them away, and charge people outrageous sums that have no basis on the towing cost or anything when the whole incident was unnecessary in the first place. So my point is not that this guy that stole the car is the good guy. This guy obviously isn't the good guy. My point is that you understand that the police aren't the good guys either. Police don't care about stopping car theft. Police are in the business of violence, car theft, and human trafficking. That's what they do. Police don't like competition. That's what the police can't have. But what the police are going to do is when someone competes with them, their, their plan from a media perspective, right? The individual officers, they just get paid to follow orders and to rob and steal and do their thing and have egos. But from a larger perspective, from the organization of the, of the corporate perspective of the police, they have to justify their existence. It's, it's well known, it's been established so many times that high-speed chases are not a benefit to society. So you think about this guy that stole a car. Let's say these police, for their cowardice or for some other reason, couldn't stop the van when it was back at that original point, okay? Let's say he, he was on the road and he was driving away. What do you gain? Tell me what you gain by chasing a car, crashing into other cars, running to the back of the car, destroying the police cars. You probably had, I don't know what the actual body count of vehicles that is in this. No one died here as far as I know. Um, but the collateral damage is hundreds of thousands of dollars, not just the vehicles that were stolen. Now, if the police hadn't been engaged in their sporting event, in their hunting event, where they hunt human beings, this wouldn't have occurred, right? All of this here is because they wanted a show and because police cannot, more than anything, they'll, they'll engage in chases like this over a speeding ticket over a burnt out taillight if you do not submit to their insanity. And this guy makes it for a long time, right? These guys are actually incredibly incompetent at stopping this truck, right? Because this guy's not, he's in a pickup truck, guys, and they have all the resources in the world. So my first takeaway from this is number one, they wanted this to go on, right? It was like ratings are up, everybody loves this, uh, keep it going. Because this didn't need to go on for an hour. There were, there were so many ways that this could have been nipped in the bud. And with a, a lot less collateral damage than you see here in these videos. So then you go through, right? We get up to here. Let's go up to one about 106. And cars are being hit as the police are chasing this guy. But let's fast forward right to when they stop him, right? The sparks are flying. The wheels are, are coming off. I'm guessing the tires are flat at this point and he's riding on the rim. Um, obviously, this guy, yes, is endangering, but who's creating the greatest danger on this highway is the police. They're the one, they always say like, he caused a public danger. The police are the ones that are, are causing all these accidents on the road, that are chasing this guy. Uh, he's crashing, he's, he's just wiped into that Jeep. Two cars down there, right? Just so the police can have their jollies and just so that the serfs can enjoy. It's, it is, it's New Edge, it's, it's bread and circus for the plebs. Now watch what happens. He comes into this gas station, okay? He hits one car. So I don't know how many cars are down now. We're at least at five or six cars, including the police cars that destroyed. Look at how incompetent these guys are, right? Imagine police, imagine if your goal was to protect other people. This guy's obviously about at his last leg. You've been chasing him now for over an hour, putting on your theater. And imagine that you come in, he just hits this car and you're this cop, right? right here, okay, right in the back. And you come in, he's slowing down, this cop comes up, these guys are getting out, this cop comes up, he bumps into this car, and this car just rams him at full speed, destroying this vehicle and this vehicle over here as well. Okay, now he comes in, and they're all racing in, and obviously the people in the gas station are like, what the bleep's going on here? So this 
This is what happens when we let police who are, act as violent criminals, and you see him like he's backing into these guys, right? He's he's going for it. He's he's ramming into them, and and they're getting their uh, <laughs> they're having to jump out of the way. But look at all these. Now you got twenty cops, right? Because police are again police act in a pack, and that's why they didn't stop it at the beginning. One of two reasons: just pure cowardice and incompetence, or they wanted the chase because they needed a good propaganda thing. They needed to show the people. But no one in the society benefited not the owners of the stolen vehicles. Now, on the other hand, if they had said, okay, here's this vehicle, let him run, let him run, let him go to his place. This guy's obviously got something going on. The vehicle probably would have turned up in suitable condition, right? There wouldn't have been two vehicles stolen. There wouldn't have been, there wouldn't have been 10 cars destroyed. There wouldn't have been all this disruption, millions of dollars in costs and resources. Think about this. Everything they did here was of no purpose, but for ego, for ratings and for propaganda. Did the owner of this car, no, this car is destroyed, this truck's destroyed, right? What about all the other people that got their, their trucks destroyed? Now to top it off, if you wanna know how much it's about ego, right? Let's look over here. Here's the car when he came into the gas station. I'm gonna show you this, I wanna draw your attention because no one's talking about this. This car on the left here in the white, they ram into it, okay? Now we fast forward a little and we're gonna see, we're gonna see what happens. Direct your attention to that car right up here. The police, this guy got his car rammed because of, of their psycho psychopathy, right? And then we go forward a few minutes. I don't even know what led up to this. I don't know what was going on, but I'm skip, 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 and you see what's going on here. And we're gonna go up until we get to this point here. And I'm gonna show you so you can just see how little this is about anyone's safety. The police have no problem with collateral damage as long as they, as long as they get what they want. Now let me check that timestamp. I'm just just a second. Here we go. 109. Because I made some notes. I make I do prep, right? I do prep these things. So let's go to 110. 110.30. All right. 110.30. Here we go. Now, what you see with the little car up there is right here. This is all going on. This guy's such a danger. The police are up here beating this guy up and dragging him out of his car. This was, this was the driver of this car that the police caused to be rammed into five times more than was necessary. And they now have him on the ground, right? Beating him up, putting him in handcuffs right up here for who knows what reason, but because, right, you got 30 cops down here. The guy in the pickup truck, the guy in the pickup truck who's probably strung out on something is such a danger. He was such a danger to society that they have time to be screwing over the guy up here on the right that just got his car wrecked so that so that they can get, you know, we're going to get a little more action. We're going to get a little more ego out of this, right? Look at them, look at them hiding behind this car, acting like they're saving the day while they work this guy over. And they've, they've worked him over. He's now on the road. They got him in cuffs and they're dragging him off for whatever reason, right? Maybe because he wouldn't, he wouldn't move his car after they destroyed it. Who knows what actually happened there? But you have to, you have to actually watch and, and pay attention to what's going on. You can't just see the narrative of guy stole a car, police are trying to stop it because stealing cars is bad. That's not what happened. Guy stole a car, that's bad. Police didn't do their job and stop the car and return the vehicle to its owner. They instead created a theater, this theater right here, which eventually ended in police shooting their guns all over the place like imbeciles because they're too big of cowards to actually just send a few guys up to the car, get the guy out and say, what, the, what, what was this about? What the heck, right? So they have to start shooting in the middle of a crowded street. 40, 50 police here, more maybe, helicopters in the air, it's a show. This is a this is a sport, you guys. This is blood sport for the ignorant who just want to be entertained. And at the same time, they show their force. They show they're powerful. They show you can't get away with it, right? But all of this was created. This entire situation, all the results of it, all the collateral damage, the people hurt, the vehicles damaged, it was created by the police. The person who stole the vehicle obviously did a bad thing, but everything that came after that was created by a system designed to empower the police and their crime syndicate.
because they're blue ISIS. That's what we do. And I know that the state worshipers are going to be like, that's ridiculous. That's stupid. The police were just doing their job. No, the police weren't doing their job. This served no one, least of all the owners of the vehicles, which are now destroyed. Any questions? Cops on adrenaline are a grave risk to everyone. Yeah, exciter. And, and really, let's be honest, their superiors like it because this is good TV, right? This is good TV. It's like watching a movie, but you don't have $300 million in production costs. The collateral damage, well, the, the people, the, the, collateral, the collateral people can pay for that and the insurance companies. And that is the reality of, of this police chase and pretty much all police chases. Most of them are simply for ego, for money, and for propaganda. And, and you know, at this point, the car is, is on fire because of all the, the insanity. I mean, this car is done, right? All, all the, most of these vehicles are destroyed. And that's what happens when instead of a group of people that actually have an ounce of courage and a desire to protect people, you have a gang of ego-driven psychopaths trained in violence, stealing, theft, and control through fear. All right, you guys.